Okay, six now. The diagram shows two cylinders, A and B. So cylinder A has a height of 1.6 and B has got a height of 0.6. And the radius of A is 0 0.56 and the radius of B, well, we don't know. So let's, let's just give it a name, R. Okay, work out the surface area of cylinder A. Give your answers in meter squared. Okay, cool, cool. So to find the surface area, and this is super easy because you're actually given a formula. Let's go straight back to the, the, the opening of the book, yeah? So right to the top, the formula booklet. So when you, when you come over here, you just want to find the, the, the curved surface area of the cylinder. And here it is. So this formula right here. So it's telling us the curved surface area of cylinder is 2 pi times the radius times the height. So we just go do 2 pi times r times its height. So let's go back to the question for a second. Let's just keep that in mind, yeah? So here we go. So the curved surface area. So we can say that the curved surface area is 2 pi r h. Now, not much to say here. Just replace r with 0 0.56 and then replace height with 1.6. So in your calculator, at least you just put that in straight away. You don't have to do all the steps, but just for the sake of convenience, you can just write this here. Now, putting this in calculator, we should get and three significant figures, yeah? So 2 times pi times 0.56 times 1.6. So let me see. So that's about 5.63, yep, rounded meter squared. Easy. Yeah, not much to do that. Hmm, it's actually so easy. So cylinder B is mathematically similar to cylinder A. All right, so what that means is that these two are directly proportional. So 1.6 is proportional to 0 0.6, meaning 0 0.56 is proportional to B's radius. Now, work out, the, all right, work out the radius of cylinder B. All right, let's just do it from up here, yeah? Now, all you can say is um, this. You can say, all right. So you can say, let's see how many times bigger, um, how many times smaller what, uh, 0 0.6 is to 1.6, yeah? So you can say 0 0.6 over... 1.6 will give us, and in the calculator, uh, duh, 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 I've got 3 eighths. So let me just double check that. So basically, this is essentially 0 0.375 times smaller, so 37.5%. Now, in your calculator, you can just literally write, okay, that means R must be 0 0.375 off 0 0.56. So R equals 0 0.375, the scale factor times 0 0.56 and that should give us and just make sure your answers look legit um, a radius of 0 0.21 okay number seven now so the students in class a and class b take the same examination all right there are 28 students in class a and 32 in class b now the mean score of all the students in both classes is 72.6 so let's keep that in mind so this is the total mean out of 60 students yeah now the means and the mean score of the students in class A is 75. Work out the mean score of students in B. Alright, so this kind of example is something known as the weighted mean, yeah? And the way it works is that we gotta think of it like this. We say we got 28 students in class A, and on average they each scored about 75 marks. Plus there were 32 students in class B and they scored well, let's just call let's call the mean uh, of B B, yeah. Just for convenience. And out of all of and if you can if you combine the two results our 60 students we should have got a mean of what was it 72.6 and this makes sense because you're essentially counting 75 times 28 marks and b times 32 and altogether there's 60 students so the average of this must equal the total class average of 72.6 now and that's it we're pretty much done here and the aim here now is literally just to rearrange and solve for b so let's have a look so to solve this equation, this is just algebra problem now. Let's times 60 across, and let's go ahead and simplify this, yeah? So 28 times 75, uh, I should have done this in advance. So you're going to get 2100 plus 32b. And then what I would do is times 60 across to clear the fraction. So 72.6 times 60, uh, give me a second, guys, yeah? Times 60 is, whoa, 4,000. 356 and now you just rearrange and solve for b so that means if you subtract 2100 and divide by 32 so i'll just show you the working out subtract 2100 and divide by 32 you should 
get ooh, an, an, an average B mark of 70.5 per student in class B. Okay, hope this helped me. So really, all you have to do is essentially consider the weighted mean, guys, yeah? Once you got that, then every single problem like this will be the same. Now, let's move on to part B. Okay, whew, let's go down a bit. So the lowest score in class A is 39, and the range of scores for class A is 57. Okay, so range just means the difference between the biggest number and the smallest number, yeah? So we know the smallest number is 39, so the biggest number we don't know. Now the low score in class B is 33 and the range is 60. Find the range of all the students in both classes. Alright, so this one's going to be a bit, a bit more different, yeah? So I always try and do this visually. So we have the range for, for A. The lowest was 39 and the highest we don't know. Let's just call it uh, upper, upper A, yeah? And we know that the range, the difference between the highest and lowest is 57. So actually this is easy. If the difference is 57, just add 57 to 39. So 39 plus 57 will give us, oh, oops, I wrote plot at times, will give us 96. So the upper bound is 96, yeah? Now how about for class B? We know the range was 60 and the lowest score was uh, 33. 33 at 60 will give us 93. And this is the upper bound. So this means that the, the, the range of all the scores, so the lowest in both classes was 33. And the highest was 96. The difference between them should give us uh, 63. Okay, now this one I bet is everybody's favorite question because this is definitely my favorite question. And this is good old soccer toa, so trigonometry, yeah? So for these questions, always write soccer toa and believe me, it's going to make your life super easy. Now let's have a look. Work out the value of x. <laughs> All right, that's the objective. So, for right angle triangles in trigonometry, always label the, the necessary size, the relevant size, yeah? So if this opposite length, the angle, is 52, this means next to it is the adjacent, so 12.6 is the adjacent. And of course, the big diagonal side is always the hypotenuse, which is opposite of our angle, yeah? Now, we look at the, the Sokotoa, which one has A and H? Well, it's K. So cross out these two, we're going to use K. Now, to write K, it's always like this. Cas C stands for cos, so it's cos of the angle, so cos of the angle, which is 52, equals A adjacent over hypotenuse, so A over H. So A, which is 12.6, over hypotenuse, which is X. And you're done. Now, all you do is literally rearrange this very simple algebraic equation and make X subject. Well, to do it, firstly, clear the fraction times X across and divide cos 52, or just swap them around. And you're done. Enter this in the calculator and, you're, and you've done question A. So let me just make sure it's okay. For guys, for you guys who are getting different answers, so let me just see if a second. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay, yeah, so I've got 20.5 centime centimeters. So just quick tip. If you guys are getting different answers, even though you're, you're typing the same thing, make sure your calculator is in degrees mode, yeah? Otherwise, it's going to recognize your your 52 as some sort of radian measure which is something you see in A-level but some people already use this in different courses similar to maths at the GCSE level but anyway yeah that's it for number 8 let's move on 9 solve the simultaneous pair of equations super easy now just doing this super fast yeah you have to basically match the coefficients coefficients are the number in front of the x or y so the second pair has a 7 or a y you can essentially just times the top by wherever x has. So if it's 7x times the first line by 7. So times in the first equation by 7, you're going to get 7x plus 7y equals, and uh, 15 times 7, I should know this, 105. And you copy the second one underneath, exactly as it's written. And all you want to do is literally uh, subtract these pair of equations. Because the aim of these simultaneous equations is to eliminate the common variables and only have a single variable left. For instance, yeah, subtracting these lot, you should get, let me just put red, 7x take away 7x is nothing, it's gone. 7y minus minus 5, so it's a double minus, so it's a plus, so 7y plus 12y, 5y is 12y. 105 take away 3 is 102. And yeah, you're done. Now you just, uh, to get y, divide by uh, 100 over 2, so, what am I doing, I'm so slow. 
102 over 12. Divide on your calculator. Uh, divide by 12. And you should get 8.5 for y. You can leave it as a fraction, but decimals is nice too. And to find x, well, just find pick any of the four equations we have that you can that looks easiest to you. I'm going to pick this one here because it looks so simple. So x plus y is 15. That means x equals 15 minus y or minus 8.5, yeah? So 15 minus answer should give us 6.5. Yep. So this is another one of my favorite questions because all oh, this and the previous one are just so easy. I'll be honest. Okay, 10. Oh, so 8 over 2 to the power 7 equals 2 to the power 9. Find the value of n. Well, just so if you guys want to do this super fast and you see you got your calculator, there is something I call the illegal method. And this one is literally it makes this problem so easy. It's, like, it's, it's unbearable. The tip, the trick is uh, re rewrite this as 2 to the power n equals 8 over 2 to the 7. And then you're going to notice there's a log button in your calculator. So all you can do is firstly say, all right, just like a normal algebra question, how if this was 2n, you can write this as n equals now the log of everything here over the log of 2. So just remember, if it was just a regular 2n equals all of the left hand, the right hand side, you just divide 2 across, right? So it'd be something like that over 2. So the difference is when you work in powers, you can just stick a log in front. And doing so will just give us the answer straight away. So have a go, guys. The log button is in your calculator. So I'm going to just do this as well. So 2 to the power 7 over log 2. And you should get minus 4. And this is actually the, the correct answer. There is a standard way, which is changing 8 to the as 2 to the power 3. 2 to the power 3 over 2 to the power 7. Subtract the powers, you get 2 to the negative 4. That also works. This is just a guaranteed no mistake way. Okay, using just divide 2 across and smash logs in front. This is something you learn in A-level math, but I think it will just help you guys solve these problems really easily. Now, let's try that method again for the second bit, yeah? Because it's the same thing. So, you've got 13 to the power k equals all of those guys. Now, you can just say k equals the log of everything was on that was on the left side. So, it'll be, let's just do a big, just make it clear, yeah? So, 13 to the power negative 6, power 4 times 13 to the power 5. All of this over log, what was in front of the K? 13. See what you guys get for this one too, yeah? So here, I mean, again, you could just use a standard method, but this is just if you if you can't, you can't be bothered like me. <laughs> so 13 to the power 5 over log 13. And you should get, well, you should get minus 19. So yeah, it works.